Turkey's in turmoil after a coup attempt failed earlier this month. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has tightened his grip on power, declaring emergency rule. Joining me to discuss what's at stake is author Alev Scott and the FT's Hugh Carnegie. Alev, if I could start with you. You've just come back from Turkey, where since the coup, Mr Erdogan has called citizens out onto the streets several times in Taksim Square in Istanbul and elsewhere. Is he managing to mobilise people who are not his natural supporters? Um, I think to a certain extent, yeah, but predominantly the people on the streets are very much uh, Erdogan supporters, supporters of the AKP. Um, and there's, but, you know, there's a real patriotic flavour to, to, to those uh, celebrations, I should say. I was going to say protests because that's what we usually think of um, when we think of large demonstrations like that. Um, there's also a very Islamic element to these, um, to these protests. Uh, that's undeniable. Um, but what's interesting is the opposition also coming out um, to denounce the coup attempt to celebrate the fact that it was um, that it was quashed. Uh, so there's a certain amount of cohesion among um, opposition parties and their supporters, as well as supporters of the government. Mm. Hugh, um, President Erdogan has purged not only those elements in the military that he holds responsible for the botched coup 10 days ago, uh, but also teachers, academics, journalists and judges. Do you think he's taking advantage of the coup, the failed coup, to accelerate a process of undermining basic freedoms and the rule of law that was already underway? Well, it was very striking that one of the things he said after the coup was that it was a gift from God. And that obviously provoked the sense that he was going to take advantage of it, having defeated the coup, uh, to consolidate his power. And all the signs are that that is exactly what he's doing. He's declared a state of emergency, which gives him uh, the ability to essentially do pretty much what he likes by decree without having to go through parliament. And this is against a background of uh, um, uh, years of him wanting to extend the powers of the presidency to change the constitution from a parliamentary democracy to an executive president. Now, he's to date not had the majority in Parliament to be able to do that, but now he has the powers under the uh, emergency law uh, to, uh, as you've said, round up people uh, uh, and, and do pretty much what he likes. And so certainly those that uh, are very concerned and his critics, those are very concerned about his ultimate uh, intentions certainly see this as him taking advantage to extend his powers and to pave the way for him to perpetuate this executive presidency. As someone once said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Um, Alev, Mr Erdogan wasted no time on the Saturday after the coup had been foiled in blaming it on officers loyal to the exiled Islamist cleric uh, Fethullah Gulen. What evidence other than the president's uh, word is there that the Gulenists were behind the coup attempt? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, it's a difficult one to answer, partly because, in truth, uh, Gulen supporters are um, not explicitly linked to Gulen in any um, in any way that you can really put your finger on. In many cases, they uh, once attended a, a university affiliated to Gulen, or maybe they worked for um, a, a, one of Gulen's media um, outlets, or something like that. So. I, I know it looks from the outside as though um, it's an exaggerated claim by, by Erdogan and to some extent it might be in that I think there were elements within the army who were involved in this coup who weren't necessarily followers of Gulen at all. But there, there have been a, a consistently high number of followers of Gulen in the military. This is not just Erdogan's word for it. We, we have seen this from other sources. But yeah, as for hard evidence that Gulen planned it, I haven't seen any. Mm. Um, there have been confessions. Um, generals have confessed to being part of the coup um, and having taking their orders from Gulen, but there's some query over whether these are genuine confessions. They've appeared after several days when these men have been kept in captivity and um, it's not necessarily um, a, a true confession, some people think. Mm. Hugh, to what extent do you think the domestic crackdown that Alev has just been describing um, is interfering with Turkey's participation in the US-led fight against ISIS in Syria and Iraq? Because obviously this, there are big geopolitical ramifications as well as domestic consequences. Sure, I think that this crisis in Turkey is profoundly worrying for the West, which was already concerned about developments in Turkey. Mm. There are great tensions between Turkey, which are now, I think, being uh, uh, worsened uh, by, by the, the coup and the aftermath of the coup over policy in Syria. Uh, the, the Turks are regarded by uh, the Americans and the NATO allies to have been somewhat, um, shall we say, ambivalent towards ISIS. 
uh, and the fight against ISIS because the Turks have had this great concern about the uh, American-backed uh, rebel Kurdish Syrian forces uh, who the Turks regard as being a threat because they are potentially allied with Kurdish rebels who are fighting the Turkish state. So that situation, already complicated, has become even more complicated. One of the big American concerns is the air base at Injilik in eastern Turkey, which the Americans have access to, and they were denied access. It was closed down during the immediate aftermath of the coup. And that may be a signal that the Turks will use that as a bargaining power, for example, to demand the extradition of Fethullah Gulen from the United States, which the US is clearly quite resistant towards. So there's a lot to play out there. In the broader term as well, of course, there is the whole question of Turkey's place in the Western alliance now that it's embarked on this course under Erdogan of increasingly apparently being at odds with, for example, uh, Western policies in terms of the, uh, of, of, of the European Union uh, and relationships uh, potentially with Russia. Mm. Alev Scott, Hugh Carnegie, thank you very much.